In this unit we will define the term crystal and will deduce first properties arising from that definition. Crystals, what does it mean? One way to approach an object is to have a first look at the term. Is it a foreign word? Does it mean something in the other language? That is the case. The term crystal is Greek and means ice. Obviously ice in form of snowflakes or glaciers are crystals, but of course there are other crystalline materials that are not ice. The explanation is simply that ice is used here in a figurative sense. Rock crystals can be found very often and easily. Here you see such a sample of rock crystals. Rock crystals are a variety of quartz with a chemical composition of SiO2. And if you look at this picture, you see that rock crystals do not only look like a sort of ice, but it was also thought in former times that these crystals were formed in extreme cold. In fact, the opposite is true as we now know. They are formed in great heat and under pressure. There are many, many varieties of quartz that can be found in nature. Many are colored through the inclusion of certain metal ions. Well, let's have a look at a few of them. Firstly, the amethyst. It is a violet variety of quartz and the color is due to iron impurities in connection with radiation of gamma rays. Here in a lovely shiny brilliant cut. The milky quartz is colorless. There are no metal ions included. But here the inclusion of tiny liquid droplets leads to the specific appearance. Finally, the rose quartz, with its typical rose color, has another impurity included, namely a relatively rare mineral of the class of silicates, the dumortiorite. And there are many, many more. Apart from the circumstance what the ancient Greeks had thought, crystals have a clear definition. Crystals are solid-state bodies which are a. homogeneous, b. unisotropic and are c. composed of constituents that are strictly three-dimensional periodically ordered. This last attribute is the most important or the most prominent one. It is the very unique feature of this state of matter. There are of course other solid-state bodies which do not show a perfect order of their building blocks. This is true for instance for wood and plastic and glass these materials are called amorphous. In general, this means, concerning the aggregate states of matter, we can divide these into solid states, liquids and gases. And the solid state in turn can be subdivided into the two main categories amorphous and crystalline. In many textbooks on crystallography you can find relatively at the beginning another definition of crystals and that is crystals have a crystal structure. Yes, this is actually not so helpful if one does not know exactly what crystal structure means. However, I think with the given definition here we already have a kind of intuition what could be meant and we will further elaborate this. What should be clear at this stage is that crystals are not something like that. Here a funny tiny animal is schematically shown, an amoeba, a so-called change animalcule, which can transform its shape easily into something different. However, I do not know if it is able to transform into something like that, a formation that resembles indeed, in a way, a crystal. Okay, what homogeneous means should be immediately clear. And we already have an imagination what 3D ordering could mean. But what unisotropic means is probably not clear. Let me give you a first explanation. All crystals show this feature called anisotropy. And this means that specific properties of a crystalline material are different for different directions. They are directional. The opposite would be isotropic and means in turn 
whatever property you look at would be the same for all directions, for all orientations with respect to an operation for instance. What kind of properties can be anisotropic? For instance, hardness and cleavability and elasticity and expansion properties. Take for instance hardness. Anisotropic hardness could mean that if you press a block like this from this direction, it is very soft, but if you exert the same force from this side, the block is by far less soft. Other anisotropic properties could be electric or thermal conductivity, the electric polarizability and magnetization. In graphite, for instance, the electric conductivity is several orders of magnitude higher along the graphene sheets running here horizontally in comparison to the conductivity perpendicular to these sheets. The understanding of such anisotropic behaviors might be difficult for specific properties, in particular regarding the exact quantitative ratios. However, the origin of this behavior and the principle that lies behind it can be explained by a very simple picture. Look at this simple two-dimensional assemble of spheres. It is periodically ordered, as you will recognize. Now we take two different directions and look at the sequence of the spheres along these directions. Okay, the first one is this direction. We have here an alternating arrangement. There are two red spheres, one blue sphere, two red spheres and so on. And these spheres are all lying adjoined at the same line. Now let's take another direction, this one here. Here the situation is obviously different. Now we have two red spheres, a blue one, two red spheres and a blue one and so on. But the pairs of the red spheres are oriented perpendicular to the blue ones and the blue ones lie in the indentation that are created by these two red spheres. And if we now imagine that we want, for example, try to push the spheres along this or that direction, it is quite clear that you have to exert different forces in order to move the spheres against each other. So that's it for now.